Cucumbers are one of the most prolific vegetables you can grow, and a freshly picked garden cuke has to be the crunchiest, juiciest thing you could possibly enjoy. So let me share with you what I've learned over the years, including when and how to start cucumbers, the best supports to use, the one thing you can do to guarantee exceptional growth, and my secrets to cracking fruits every time. Like many warm season crops, there's a wealth of cucumbers to choose from. You've got gherkin types with smaller, firmer fruits that stand up well to pickling, slicing cucumbers, ideal for salads, snacking types for the lunchbox, and quirky customers like lemon-shaped yellow cucumbers. Most varieties are vining, but there are compact, bushier types perfect for growing in containers. There are cucumbers ideal for growing in the greenhouse or a tunnel, outside cucumbers, and modern breeding has even produced varieties tolerant of cooler summers, perfect if you're in a decidedly iffy climate like mine. But here's my first pro tip. Pick a variety that is gonna make life easier for yourself, and there are two ways to ensure this. The first is to pick a variety that has at least some resistance to common diseases like powdery mildew or cucumber mosaic virus. Second, opt for a path and a carpet variety. This mouthful of a word describes fruits that don't need to be fertilized in order to set fruit, no bees required. Fruit set is guaranteed, and because no fertilization has happened, there are no seeds. So a lot of the commercial cucumbers you get don't have any seeds in them, so these guys will also be parthenocarpic. Most parthenocarpic varieties are also gynoecious, meaning they produce mainly female flowers. And because it's the female flowers that swell to produce the fruits, that can only mean one thing, more fruits to pick for us. Now, if you see a variety described as all female, well, that will be gynoecious and almost certainly parthenocarpic as well. Goodness, we're <laughs> learning some quite complicated words today. These varieties are hybrids, meaning that two parent varieties have been crossed to produce them. So the seeds can be a bit on the pricier side, but the reliability and performance that they bring more than compensates. Cucumbers grow astonishingly quickly and in ideal circumstances can go from sowing to the first picking within two months. So there's no real rush to sow them. I tend to sow mine about three to four weeks before my last frost date. And if you're not sure when yours is, well, you can use the garden planner to look that up and I will pop a link to it down below so you can enjoy a free trial and find out. As mine are destined for the greenhouse, I can bag myself an earlier start, but do bear in mind that cucumbers prefer nighttime temperatures above 50 Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, and daytime temperatures a lot warmer than that. So cucumbers are a warm season crop that doesn't like it cold. Now I've got my seeds here and they've been soaking overnight in lukewarm water. So I just have to drain them off now and then give them a bit of a rinse, just to kind of remove any inhib inhibitors, sorry, or toxins on the seed coat, just so they're ready to sow. And soaking like this helps to prime the seeds ready to germinate. It buys us a little bit of a head start. Now, once you've soaked them and drained them off, get on and sow them straight away, because these guys are now primed and ready. And for more sowing tips like this, do check out our sewing masterclass video, which I'll link to down below. Right then, let's get on and sew them into their pots. Now you can use small pots like this or chunky plug trays like this, but I prefer to use the pots. And some people sow two seeds per pot and then just pull out the weaker seedling to leave one in each pot. However, Given the price of the seeds, I prefer just to sow one seed into a pot and then, then if one doesn't come up, well, that's no big shake. So just make a little finger or even a little hole even with your finger down to a depth of about half an inch or one centimeter and then simply pop your seed in like that and you're good to go. And of course, we'll need to label these pots so we don't forget what we have sown. Seedlings pop up so much quicker when they're warmer. Now, the ideal temperature range for cucumbers is around 70 to 80 Fahrenheit, which is 21 to 26 Celsius. 
it gets nowhere near as warm as that in here. So what I'm gonna do after watering them is bring them inside to germinate. Now you could have them on a simply a warm sunny window sill, or if you've got a heat mat, pop them on there because the gentle bottom heat will really warm up the potting mix in record time and you'll get super speedy germination. That's what I did with an earlier sowing and they came up within two and a half days. So there you go. I'll keep my cucumber seedlings on a warm sunny windowsill, then bring them into the greenhouse once it's not too cold. Bring them back inside if a really chilly night does threaten. If seedlings fill their pots before it's uh, time to plant, like this one here, then you can just pot them up into a slightly bigger pot and keep on doing that until it is safe to plant them outside or wherever you're planting them. In warmer climates or when spring tips into summer, you can sow cucumbers directly where they are to grow. But sowing into pots like this offers a few advantages. It enables an earlier start in a cooler climate like mine and it keeps the delicate seedlings safe from pests like slugs and cucumber beetles. So while it does add an extra step to the whole process, it ensures against disappointment. Ideally, we want to plant our cucumbers outside during a spell of milder weather and most definitely after the risk of frost has passed. But before then, we need to harden off our plants by acclimatizing them to outdoor conditions. What I'll do is I'll just leave my plants outside somewhere nice and sheltered like this for increasingly longer over the period of a week or so. So maybe an hour or two on the first day, a few hours more on the second day, and so on until it's time for the big day. Mine will be staying in here where it's a little bit warmer. Now cucumbers put on lots of vigorous growth. To, so to support that, we need rich and fertile soil. So I'm just spreading a little bit of really, really well-rotted manure here. Now this has been sitting around for about a year, so you wouldn't want to put it as fresh as this because it's nice and old. It's as good as nice crumbly compost. So it'll be fine for our plants. Just get that spread in, ready for planting. And I'll probably plant in about another week or possibly two, depending on the progress of spring. And then for an extra little boost, why not? Because I've got it, a few chicken manure pellets. I'm just gonna scatter those in and we'll just tickle those in as well. It's got a real distinctive smell, but well, it's all good stuff. If it smells bad, you know it's usually probably good for the soil. The best results are had when vining cucumbers are trained up off the ground. This reduces the pest risk and it improves airflow around the plants so there's less chance of disease too. And they'll be growing up into the sunshine which will help to fuel all of that prolific growth. For vining cucumbers like the ones I'm growing, the simplest way to support plants is using sturdy string secured at the top to a kind of horizontal wire. You could also use trellises or A-frame style supports, but I love how easy string supports are to set up and manage. When it's time to plant, I'll soak the root balls for an hour or so, and then dig my holes, carefully remove each plant from its pot, and then the strings can either be loosely tied to the base of the stem, or my preference, looped beneath the root ball as it's planted to hold it in position. Handle plants with care, as the roots and stems are very delicate and can easily snap. I space my plants between about a foot and 18 inches apart, which is uh, 30 to 45 centimeters. This makes the most efficient use of space. So long as plants are properly supported, pruned and watered, you can get away with this fairly close spacing. Cucumbers put on a lot of growth, but famously they're full of water. The fruits are about 96% water. So the one thing you can do, the biggest tip of all, to encourage vigorous growth and lots of these things is of course to water really thoroughly. So check the soil often. Push a finger down where they're growing, about an inch or so into the soil and check it. If it's anywhere near approaching dry, get on and give everything a really good deep water to keep things quenched. When you water, try to avoid splashing water onto the lowest leaves because that can create moist, humid conditions and the potential for disease. Now, once things really get growing, uh, it's worth applying some sort of mulch, something like dried 
grass clippings or hay or straw, bark chippings, more compost, anything like that, just to kind of shade the soil and keep that moisture locked in. Well-prepared soil will get your cucumbers off to a flying start, but as they begin to fruit, it's worth going in with a liquid fertilizer that's high in potassium to encourage more of those flowers and fruits. Now I just use something like a liquid tomato feed, which I use for all of my fruiting vegetables, including tomatoes, peppers, uh, eggplant and aubergine and the like. You might opt for a top dressing of granular fertilizer, which can then be forked in or tickled in. Pruning cucumbers isn't complicated and is a lot like vining tomatoes. Now the leaves, the fruits, the tendrils, and any side shoots or suckers all form from the same intersections along the main stem of your cucumber. As I'm growing my cucumbers quite close together, I'll just keep it simple and remove every side shoot or sucker that develops. However, if you space your plants slightly further apart, you might choose a different tack. For example, letting the lowest side shoot or sucker grow on, tying that to its own support, and then essentially having a double headed vine that acts a bit like two separate plants. I like to cut off the lowest leaves as they become tired and inevitably tattered, as well as any overcrowded foliage higher up. This also keeps the leaves away from the soil and thereby reduces that disease risk. Once vines reach the top of their supports, you can just pinch off the growing point or let the stem flop back down and side shoots develop for more fruits. Cucumbers use their tendrils to grab hold of things as they grow upwards, but I like to help vines sit snug in their string supports by carefully weaving them into place. And this does need a delicate hand to avoid snapping. Do this often as the vines grow. The first fruits are often weirdly shaped and traditional open pollinated varieties may struggle early in the season when it's still a bit cool and there are fewer pollinators around. For this reason, you may decide to remove some of the first flowers to help the plants concentrate on growth, at least to get them bulked out initially. Pick fruits while they are still young, firm, and lovely lush and green. The best way to harvest fruits is to cut them from the vine with a bit of stalk still attached. Just don't yank them off the plant or you'll risk pulling away the whole plant. And if you can, harvest in the morning while the fruits are still firm and cool from the night. Check plants daily and pick promptly to keep the fruits coming. If you let the fruits grow too big or you'll miss one and it worse still becomes yellow, then it's gonna start forming seeds and the plant will think it's done its job and begin to shut down. So you want to avoid that. It's a good reason to be really meticulous in exploring the plants to get every last fruit. With cucumbers, it really is a case of the more you pick, the more you get. On the odd occasion, fruits can sometimes develop a bit of a bitter taste. Now this is caused by a compound called cucurbitacin, which plants produce when they're stressed. That could be from lack of water, nutrients, if temperatures are too low or indeed very high. It can also happen when flowers of all female varieties, those gynoecious plants, are pollinated by the occasional male flower makes them bitter. So if you see any male flowers on an all-female variety, just pick them off. Curcubitacin can also make us burp. So if you've suffered from bitter fruits or indeed the burps, then opt for a so-called burpless variety. It sounds like I'm making it up, but really these are a thing. Also, be sure to water your plants copiously. If you do find fruit tasting a bit, a bit bitter, then just cut off the end closest to the stalk attaching it to the plant and peel your fruits and you'll find that most of the bitterness should go. Bitter tasting fruits can also attract cucumber beetles, a common problem in North America. Now these beetles feed on the plants and as they do, they can transmit diseases and bacterial wilts. I'm very lucky I don't have to suffer those beetles here, but if you do, here are a few tips to deal with them. As well as growing bitter-free varieties to make your plants less obvious, 
Try starting seedlings off under cover where you can protect them. Then keep plants under insect mesh for as long as possible until flowers start to form or they need to grow up and out, by which time plants will be more robust anyhow. Use yellow sticky traps to monitor beetle populations and remove any you find. Beetles can be picked off and squashed, knocked off and gathered, even vacuumed up but you might think this is just a little bit cruel. I may not suffer from bothersome beetles, but I do have my own challenge to contend with, and that's powdery mildew. This is a fungal disease that covers the leaves in a white fuzz. This reduces the plant's ability to photosynthesize and stalls growth. As well as selecting blight resistant varieties, just be sure to keep plants really well watered and of course encourage good airflow to reduce the chances of that disease. If mildew does strike, then I pick off the worst affected leaves and then I've got another trick up my sleeve which is to make a solution of just uh, one part milk, and it has to be animal milk, to three parts water, and then spray this on my plants. This milky solution is sprayed at the very, very first sign of infection, and I spray it all over the plants, making sure to get right in there on the top side, but also the undersides of the leaves, so every single plant surface is covered. It's believed that the proteins in the milk work with sunlight to create a hostile environment for the fungi. It doesn't last though, so it's worth repeating this simple treatment every 10 days to guard against another flare-up. If you're growing a mildew resistant variety, do bear in mind that no variety is 100% resistant, so you still need to be really, really observant and act quickly. What does your milk bring to the yard? Well, mine gets rid of mildew. As cucumbers age, they can start to lose their mojo. I find that one sowing is enough in my cooler climate, but if you enjoy warmer summers or a longer growing season, then you may find that plants simply run out of steam before the end of the growing season. The simple way around this is to make regular sowings, say once a month, so you can replace the older plants regularly. Out with the tired old guard, and in with the vigorous new recruits to reinvigorate things. Of course, it's easy to feel overwhelmed with cucumbers. Once they get going, they are relentless. There's no stopping them, but there are many ways to enjoy them. Drop them into drinks or make a cooling cucumber water on a hot day. Pop them on your eyes to freshen up. Enjoy them in salads. Whiz them up into smoothies or a gazpacho soup or transform them into very Moorish pickles like these and you can watch this video next to find out how. I'll catch you next time.